Let's start by reviewing use of the GlideScope in an adult. The GlideScope video laryngoscope is an extremely useful tool for intubating the patient with a challenging airway because it allows the intubator to essentially see around the corner into the posterior pharynx. This image is then projected on a monitor where not only the intubator, but his or her assistants can see it. Unlike the Mac, the GlideScope should be inserted into the center of the mouth and rotated over the top of the tongue. This position lines up the camera lens located at the tip of the blade with the larynx. Avoid the temptation to look at the monitor until you've placed the blade inside the mouth and turned the corner into the pharynx. Once inside the mouth, optimally position the image of the larynx in the midline. Don't insert the GlideScope too deep. Insert the endotracheal tube under direct vision with the curve aimed toward the right side of the mouth. This keeps the tip from tangling with the blade. Once the tip of the tube has passed out of view behind the tonsillar pillars, then look at the monitor. Rotate the tube back to midline and aim at the larynx. Slowly advance the tube through the cords. Withdraw the stylet 2 to 3 centimeters to effectively soften the tip of the tube as you insert. Advance the tube into the trachea looking at the monitor, but remove the glide scope looking at the patient, not the monitor. Don't insert the tube too deeply. Since the focal length of the lens is short, the larynx is a lot closer than it appears. If the tube is too deep with the tip very close to the larynx, rotating the tube forward will tend to place it into the esophagus. You must leave enough room to be able to rotate your tip forward and upward into the larynx. If you keep bumping into the posterior arytenoids, pull the tube back until the tip is just visible placing it higher in the pharynx. Now when you rotate forward again, the tip will be lined up with the larynx. The range of pediatric GlideScope blades not only vary in size for different age patients, they vary in shape. The change in shape compensates for the fact that the angles of the pediatric airway and the depth of the larynx with relationship to the structures of the neck change with age. Compare this size two blade on the left with the one on the right. Recommendations for the correct size are based on weight. However, sometimes a GlideScope blade based on weight will be too long and at the wrong angle to lift the epiglottis, blocking the view. In this case, using one size smaller and therefore a shorter blade may allow greater ability to lift the tip of the epiglottis. The technique is the same as for an adult. To prepare the tube, insert a semi-rigid stylet into your endotracheal tube and match the shape to the shape of your blade. Insert the blade midline, looking at the patient. Don't sweep the tongue. Don't insert the blade too deep. Once the tip of the blade turns the corner, look at the monitor to optimize position. Insert the endotracheal tube parallel to the blade, looking at the patient. Starting with the tube rotated 90 degrees to the right and then turning it during insertion can help insertion of the tube into a small mouth. Once the tube turns the corner, look at the monitor to guide insertion. Attach your ventilation device and test ventilation.